First John starts with a rather complicated sentence, but the keys are to understand what that first word is and to find the main verb. You'll notice that it is a rough breathing and an accent, so it's not the article, it is a relative pronoun. So, so neuter singular, and it's so it's what was from the beginning, and you remember Greek prepositional phrases can drop off the article, you can put it back in there if you want. And then here's another relative clause, what ake ka men. Now you probably just memorized that form, but the verb's root is a ku, from which we get a ku in the present. And again, this is that word that it does this double duplication, and then the alpha is lengthened to an eta. So it's the perfect of a ku. What we have heard, another relative clause, what we have seen. Okay, heorakamen is another form you probably just memorized. It's from the root hora, and it gets this double augment where you add the epsilon, and then you lengthen the omicron to omega. So heorakamen is the perfect of horao. What we have seen, then here's your dative phrase. Datives are to, by, in, or with, so context would be with. What we have seen with our eyes then another relative clause, this one's a little more complicated. What, then theaomai, so what we have seen and, now what's this word right here? You notice it's a rough breathing, but no accent, so it can't be a relative pronoun, it is the article, right? And the hands of us have touched, so it's a simple formation, selafao, to touch concerning the word of life. Now, what don't you have in verse one? You don't have a verb, do you? And there's two ways that people handle this. Either they say this is just a sentence fragment, and if you notice in the Greek text, they often put a dash after that, and some translations do that as well. The key is to notice that you have a dash dash in modern critical texts. So verse two is somewhat of a parenthetical statement, and then verse 3 starts out with another relative clause summarizing verse 1. What we have seen and we have heard, yay, there's our verb. We announce also indirect object to you. So if we go back to verse 1 and let's phrase it, you break it at punctuation and especially at relative clauses. So it's what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have seen or maybe beheld, and our hands have touched concerning the word of life. Now, technically, if the verb is in verse 3, then these relative clauses are all direct objects. And so you could just phrase it like this. Or if you wanted to, you could take this whole set of phrases and move them over the lagu, because it's the message, who is Jesus himself, that they have seen. But the other thing that we'd want to do here with the phrasing is to recognize that you have two verbs in this relative clause, and you certainly would want to indicate that. So you would select those and add in a tab, and then do the tab. And so you can see it's what these two things, what we have seen and our hands have touched, all concerning the word of life, which is what John is now announcing to them. I should also ask, what is the case of the relative pronouns? Now, the relative clauses are functioning as the direct object of the verb announce, but the case of a relative pronoun is determined by how it's used inside the relative clause, right? So what case are each of the has? Well, the first one is the subject of ain, but the other ones are the direct object of the verb inside the relative clause. So the first one is nominative, and the other ones are accusative.